What does it take to become a billionaire? Some have done it with social media, online shopping, and electric cars. But there are a lot more billionaires you definitely haven't heard of, and you won't believe how they made their fortunes. Giovanni Ferrero is an unlikely candidate for the richest man in Italy, and he picked up that title when his brother passed away in 2011. He's become the sole heir to Ferrero SPA, a multinational chocolate and confectionery company. It's best known for those little wrapped Ferrero Rocher balls, a flaky candy filled with bits of hazelnut that your aunt probably gave you when she came back from Europe. So, how does it translate into a net worth of $35 billion? Ferrero makes another product that's not as associated with it, the chocolate and hazelnut spread Nutella, a favorite around the world. And that's a lot of nuts and a lot of dough. You've definitely not heard of the next billionaire on our list, especially if you don't live in India. Gautam Adani isn't just one of the richest men in Asia with a net worth of $93 billion. He's one of the few on this list who didn't inherit his wealth. His father was a textile merchant, he dropped out of school, and went to work for his brother in the plastics unit. That gave him connections to the export-import industry and he founded the Adani Group in 1988. It's now a multinational corporation that designs ports around the world and has holdings in energy, agriculture, and aerospace. He's the majority owner of India's second largest airport and was even the subject of a kidnap ransom plot in 1998. Another one of our self-made billionaires made their fortune off what might be the cheapest but most important thing on earth. It might be surprising, but Zhang Shanshan made his fortune by innovating the bottled water market in China. While he has pharmaceutical holdings, his biggest money stream is beverages. In China, distilled water was the most common choice, so he made a risky move when he stopped removing natural minerals from his bottled water. This led Nongfu Spring to become one of the world's largest beverage companies, even beating out soda powerhouses in the Asian nation. The notoriously reclusive Zhang saw his net worth skyrocket to over $60 billion when the company went public in 2020, making him the richest man in China. Sometimes you don't even need to innovate to become a billionaire. All it takes is being in the right place at the right time. For Robin Zhang, it was all about picking the right thing to manufacture. The Chinese billionaire founded Amperex Technology Limited in 1999 as a battery manufacturer, but he soon focused the company on the lithium-ion batteries that became common in many smart items. Demand increased, especially once they became used to power Tesla Roadsters. Zhang sold the company to a Japanese corporation, but spun off the lithium-ion battery production into a new company, and it took off like wildfire, giving him a net worth of just under $50 billion. You probably know what this next man did, even if you don't know his name. Zhang Yuming might be the closest thing China has to a Mark Zuckerberg or a Jeff Bezos, the founder of some of the internet's most popular sites. His company ByteDance included the news aggregator Totiao in a video sharing platform known as Musical.ly. But the latter rebranded, and that's when it took off as the viral video juggernaut known as TikTok. Powered by a billion dances and cat videos, Zhang Yiming became a controversial figure around the world as well as one of the richest, with a net worth of $44 billion even as he planned to step down as CEO. From wood to wealth? That's the story of this next man. Francois Pinault had humble beginnings, as the Frenchman was born in the countryside and worked for his family's timber company. After time in the military, he took over the family business and founded a wood trading company. He then made some savvy investments in bankrupt companies, switching his focus to retail and luxury goods, and founded the conglomerates Caring and Artemis. Heading back to China, few things are more powerful than communication. Ma Hua Tang runs Tencent, Asia's most valuable company. It's not hard to see why. The tech powerhouse is all over the map. He has holdings and investments, gaming and entertainment around the world. But his biggest asset is in the instant messaging service WeChat, which lets people from across China reach each other in seconds. With many Western messaging sites banned in the country, WeChat is critical and briefly made Ma Hua Tang one of the 10 richest men in the world. He's fallen out of that list, but his net worth of $46 billion still makes him a force to be reckoned with in the billionaire world, one that consistently avoids the spotlight. Other billionaires made their fortune by providing something more vital than entertainment. Why does everyone love Aldi so much? The discount German grocery store is known for its no-frills surface, including making you put a quarter in to rent a shopping cart. Checkout lines are long, the stores are small, and the prices stay low, and that's turned the company into a massive powerhouse. The current managers of the Family Trust, siblings Kark Albrecht and BD Heister have kept their father's business going strong and currently have net worths of over $14 billion each. That's a ton of canned goods. And they're not the only Teutonic Titans on the list. 
Kuni and Nagel International has been a powerful transport and logistics company based in Switzerland for over a hundred years, and it's evolved from a freight shipping company to one with holdings around the world. It handles transport for major companies by land and sea on multiple continents and runs massive events like the Rugby League World Cup. And at the helm is Klaus Michael Kuni, the third generation majority owner who has aggressively expanded the company. It's paid off, giving him a net worth of 36 billion, making him the richest man in Germany. When people need something, supplying it is a great way to get rich. If you need glasses in Italy, really there's only one name on most people's lips, Luxottica. You might not have heard their name, but the odds are you've bought their goods, because they own all of LensCrafters, Sunglass Hut, Pearl Vision, Target Optical, and Glasses.com. Their founder and chairman, Leonardo Del Vecchio, has largely cornered the glasses and frames market around the world, and neither he nor the company is flashy about it. With a net worth of $26 billion, he's the second richest man in Italy, and very happy to let you wear his goods without making him a household name. Our next billionaire shows that there's no age limit to becoming a successful businessman. In Hong Kong, there's one man who rises above them all, Li Shao Qi, a powerful real estate magnate and philanthropist. He manages hotels and restaurants around the Chinese region. He was briefly the fourth wealthiest person in the world in 1997, and then his empire was upended as China took over the former British holding. That meant a new way of doing business and a new bureaucracy to contend with. Li Xiao Qi persevered and currently has a net worth of $33 billion. He retired from an active role in his company in 2019, about time since he had just turned 91 years old. Jumping over from Asia to the Americas, we discover another influential billionaire. David Thompson, third Baron Thompson of Fleet, it's a mouthful, and the Canadian media magnate inherited a powerful empire from his father in 2006. Though there was some controversy upon his ascension to the role, he proved himself in a big way when he acquired the international media company Reuters and merged it with the Thompson Company. While he's not a household name, he is known for his love of art and has taken advantage of his net worth of $45 billion, the largest in Canada, to build an underground art gallery at his home. Nobody truly knows the value of his collection, but we do know that he has a tendency to pay a lot of money for art. He purchased his most expensive piece, The Massacre of the Innocents, at a price of $76.7 million. In some cases, these billionaires had to work much harder to make it onto the list. Len Blavatnik had humble beginnings, growing up in Soviet Ukraine and immigrating as a college student. He started a new halfway across the world, earned a business degree at Harvard, and founded Access Industries in 1986. When the Soviet Union fell, he saw an opportunity and jumped back into the Eastern Bloc. He took advantage of the vacuum and now runs a massive company including investments in oil, coal, chemicals, plastic, media, and real estate. He's the richest man in the UK with a net worth of almost $40 billion, but he's most known for his charitable giving. He pays it forward so much he was even given a knighthood in 2017. Sometimes a lesser-known name runs an icon. Everyone knows the Chanel brand, especially its controversial founder Coco Chanel. She's been dead for 50 years, but she had a co-founder, a man named Pierre Wertheimer. The Wertheimers have been quietly running the luxury fashion and watch company ever since. Alan and Gerard Wertheimer are currently the controlling shareholders. Alan handles fashion, Gerard handles watches, and the unassuming brothers have a net worth of over $30 billion. They don't get too many headlines unless it's in equestrian digests. You've definitely seen ads for this next guy's company, but unless you're a big football fan, you don't know the name behind the ads. Dan Gilbert went to law school but worked part-time at his parents' real estate agency. That short-term job turned out to be a worthy investment because Gilbert went on to fund one of the first online direct mortgage lender companies, Rock Financial. It was bought by a software company in 2000 and named Quicken Loans. He bought it back only two years later with a group of investors and remains its chairman to this day, with a net worth of $37 billion. But sports fans might know him better as the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were worth upwards of $1.5 billion. Everyone knows this next company, but its founder is a little quieter. Nike. It's the name in sports attire, and everyone recognizes the famous swoosh. Co-founder Phil Knight helped build it from a small company to an empire and it's paid off by making him one of the few people with a net worth of over $50 billion. After founding the company with his former college track coach, he's become well known for his massive philanthropic contributions to his alma maters, as well as for owning the animated film company Leica. If you like movies like Coraline or The Box Trolls, they're brought to you by Nike. Going back to the other side of the globe, we gotta ask, who is the richest man in Asia? 
That would be Mukesh Ambani, an Indian businessman who got his start working in his father's spice and agriculture business. That business grew into a diversified corporation, Reliance Industries Limited, and gained holdings in refining, petrochemicals, and media. It only grew from there, and Ambani took over following his father's death in 2002. He's built the fortune massively since, introducing a smartphone brand and purchasing one of India's most popular cricket teams. The end result? A net worth that tops $100 billion. Sometimes it doesn't take that long to get to the top. You just need to be lucky and time it right. Sam Bankman Fried was born in 1992, when many of his companies on the billionaires list were already at the top of his game. He had a normal upbringing, being raised by two law professors, but he gained an interest that would send him on a wild ride. Cryptocurrency. He's now the founder and CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, running it out of the Bahamas. His net worth of $26 billion makes him the richest person in their 20s, and he's known for giving 1% of all the company's revenue to charity. But as volatile as crypto can be, people will wonder how long he'll stay on top. Who's the richest woman in the world? Everyone knew Lillianne Betancourt, the French heiress and businesswoman who was one of the leading shareholders of L'Oreal. But the cosmetics magnate died in 2017, and the title of world's richest woman was passed on to her daughter, Francois Betancourt Myers. She had a tense relationship with her mother before her death, even suing her in 2008. Since she inherited the title of the world's richest woman, with an estimated wealth of $94 billion, she's become known for her philanthropy, giving a quarter of a billion dollars to rebuild the Notre Dame Cathedral. But not all billionaires are worth celebrating. How rich is Dawood Ibrahim? No one knows, but the notorious Indian criminal is believed to be a billionaire. Wanted around the world for drug trafficking, murder, terrorism, and other crimes, he's believed to be the mastermind behind a series of explosions in Mumbai in 1993. He might have started out as a small-time criminal in the 1970s, but he is now believed to have one of the biggest cash stockpiles for a criminal since the notorious Pablo Escobar. But if you're looking to ask him for the secrets to his success, good luck. No one knows where to find him. We still haven't looked at the true richest men in the world. When thinking about the richest men in the world, the likes of Bezos, Musk, and Gates come to mind, right? But are they really the richest men in the world? Although one of the three is often named as the richest man in the world, there is one man who overtook them all, and we are sure that you've never heard of him. That would be Bernard Arnault, the French businessman and investor who serves as chairman of the parent company of Louis Vuitton. The luxury goods company is a powerhouse, but you don't get to challenge tech titans on fashion brands alone. Arnaud is known for his savvy investments and love of collecting fine art, and has slowly built his fortune into a staggering $188 billion, enough to put him at number 3 on the charts right now and even briefly holding the number 1 slot. Who's next? The odds are you might not have heard their name… yet. For more on the billionaire class, check out Millionaires vs Billionaires How Do They Live? Or watch The Ruthless Criminal Who Only Targets Billionaires for the Dark Side of Wealth.